solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as the trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. Just moving to a, a, a different theme, Marshall, you've done a lot of thinking around uh, uh, value-based coaching or, uh, or pricing the coaching based on value, if I may call it that. And, and, in, and in my conversations, one of the questions that often comes up is, how do I measure the ROI? Is it such a basic question? But it's- Oh, very simple. I can answer that question. Yeah. I don't. I don't measure it at all. My clients measure it. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you're the potential CEO. Now I'll describe you. Now either coach the CEO or the potential CEO. Now let's imagine you're the potential CEO of a huge company. First thing is I don't get paid if you don't get better. I get paid nothing during the entire coaching assignment. Nothing. Have you ever met anyone beside me who works for a year for nothing and get paid if they get better? Do you ever meet anybody else? No. No. You know what? They don't really believe in what they're doing. They don't have confidence. See, these are, there's one way to test if someone really believes what they're saying. You can ask a person one question and instantly determine their level of belief. You know what that question is? Do you want to bet on it? Mm -hmm. Do you want to bet on it? You know, if they say I believe it, but I wouldn't bet on it, they don't believe it. They don't believe it. Well, I bet on it every time. When you get paid for results, you learn humility. The client I coached that I spent the least amount of time with improved the most. The client I spent the most amount of time with didn't improve at all. So I made a chart on one dimension, time spent with Coach Marshall Goldsmith, and the other dimension was called improvement. There seemed to be a clear negative correlation between spending time with me and getting better. I thought, well, this is kind of a humbling chart. I go talk to my client who I spent the least amount of time with and proved the most, Alan Mulally. Alan was CEO of the year in the United States. Um, unbelievable, probably the best leader in the world in the last 20 years, at least corporate leader. So I said, Alan, of all the people I coach, you improved the most and spent the least amount of time with you. I showed Alan my chart. I said, Alan, the way this chart looks, so you never met me, you'd really been good. <laughs> so I said, Alan, what should I learn about coaching from you? He said, Marshall, you got one key challenge, customer selection. You pick the right customer, you always win. You pick the wrong customer, you're never going to win. He said, don't make coaching about yourself and your own ego and how smart you think you are. Make it about the great people you work with and how proud you are of them. And he said, the CEO of Ford, my job wasn't that different. I don't design cars or build cars, sell cars. I get to have great people. And every day I tell myself, leadership's not about me, it's about them. Well, back to your question. You're the future CEO. You will get confidential feedback from everyone around you. You will pick important areas to improve. You will follow up on a regular basis. You will apologize for your mistakes. You will involve me on a regular basis and you will get measured twice. Now, Deepak, what if you said, I don't want to do that? You know what I'd say? Goodbye. I don't judge you. I don't care. You don't want to do it. Don't. I'm just not going to work with you. Option A, you do what I say or option B, I don't work with you. There's two choices. Well, you say yes. Then I go to your chairman and I say, you know, Mr. Chairman, this guy Deepak's get better. This stuff is judged by these people over this time frame. Is it worth this money? Yes or no? And by the way, if the answer is no, don't hire me. If the answer is yes, you can't lose. If he gets better, pay me. If he doesn't get better, it's all free. Well, I don't make the business case for my clients at all. They make the business case for me. And if they don't have a business case, I don't work with them. Mm. 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 Absolutely, Marshall. It's, it's uh, so, so refreshing to see uh, you backing yourself. I mean, I, I hear you. It's about backing yourself and having belief in what you say and sort of be willing to, to sort of, uh, as I say, put, put money where your mouth is. Uh, let me tell you what inspired that. 
Years ago, I was 14 years old back in Kentucky. We were very poor. And the roof started leaking. And, you know, we had to get a new roof or the house gets trashed. And to help save money, my dad had me work with a roofer to help him put on the roof. His name is Dennis Mudd. So it's hard to put on a roof, very hard work. And he was very serious and he tried to do such a good job. And, and we made the roof and it got all done. And Dennis Mudd was very poor. And he looked at my dad, his name is Bill, and he said, Bill, I want you to inspect that roof. If this roof is of high quality, I want you to pay me. If it's not of high quality, it's all free. I looked at Dennis Bud. You know what I thought? This guy's poor, but he is not cheap. This man has character and dignity. I want to be Dennis Mudd when I grow up. I have never shown the character he has. Why? If I don't get paid, look, that picture, that's my view from my house. If I don't get paid, I'm not going to starve to death. Dennis Mudd needed the money. He doesn't get paid. He doesn't eat. That's character. Back to the uh, client selection point you spoke about, Marshall. You spoke about talking to the CEO of he or she's uh, open to running with a process that you spoke about and the chairman. But are there other characteristics you look for in terms of coachability before you take on somebody? Three. Mm -hmm. One, they have to have the courage to look in the mirror. Two, they have to have the humility to admit they can improve because you see, I've, I found it, I'm very incapable of helping perfect people improve. If they're perfect, then they don't need me. And then four, they have to have the, dis uh, three, they have to have the discipline to do the hard work. It's hard work. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets better because I'm a co their coach. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, why do I always get ranked the best coach in the world? Nobody ever watched me coach anybody. Why do I get ranked best coach in the world? I have the best clients. And my clients say I'm wonderful. That's it. I've got great clients. And by the way, I can publicly talk about who they are. They write their names in my books. I've got the best clients. 